creator of the guys who brought you Puzzle Dungeon comes a new tactical skirmish game for one to two players. And this game is called To The Death. If you've ever played Puzzle Dungeon, you'll know that that game is a solo player game in which you're going to set up a certain amount of columns and rows of monsters. You'll be using a deck along with a hand of cards to fight those with, along with your hero and trying to defeat all of a certain requirement in order to win the game. And this one here brings together elements from that game, but puts it into a stylized tactical variant. So basically you can play against an opponent or you can play against the AI, in which case each of the players, you and your opponent, are going to select characters along with special cards that are called uh, like champion cards and uh, wizard cards and fighter cards to attach those characters. There's of course just as much replayability in this game as the previous one and if you don't know about the previous one this game here has a ton of replayability. You're never going to go through the game entirely with as much replay value as it has. You'll set your squad of four members up and they'll set their squad up, putting them in the front line, putting them in the back line, and then using their ranged and melee attacks along with their skills, abilities, traits, and triumphs and all that good stuff to hit and knock players down to their exhausted area of their HP. If you can exhaust all of your opponent's heroes or champions, you will win the game of, what is this one here? To the death. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show all the components of the game, give you a rough understanding of how it is played, and then we'll come up and discuss this game comparatively to the last one because they share a lot of similar qualities and stylistic artwork, and whether or not you should pick up this game as well, or in addition to, or uh, however we discuss it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take it down below. So here we have To The Death and everything included, and this is the Kickstarter version, so you get a bunch of additional stuff, even though the base game just gives you a bunch of additional stuff as well. This is kind of just more on top of more. Let's go ahead and go over everything. The first thing is, of course, the box for the game, which you saw in the previous uh, section of this video. This is the rule book for the game explaining how to play. This is the full checklist of everything that you can get in the game and uh, shows you that there's quite a bit of things here, as well as you're going to be getting all the cards for the game. So there's two modes to the game. There is a one versus one mode, which you play against a friend, and then there is the one versus the AI mode, which you play against a AI bad guy. This, all of this stuff over here is all for the AI mode. These are basically monsters that are uh, indeed more powerful than average monsters, and you can shuffle them into a monster deck to make them even more, the game even more challenging. These are the regular monster minions, and these are like the king monster minions, that if you've played Puzzle Dungeon, you'll know that these how, how these kind of function as far as the different types, and that these are definitely scarier and stronger to deal with. This is an average looking monster that has his abilities and whatnot down below, and then the king monster is represented by the little key King icon here and of course the king on the front of the card then we have these cards here which are basically enemy HP so when monsters take damage maybe they'll start at a certain amount of HP and they will slowly drop and you're basically trying to defeat these monsters in the solo player mode this over here is the setup for two players the one versus one mode and this is the deck of cards you'll be utilizing throughout the game to do weapon checks to attack to do abilities and whatnot these are the three or four different stacks of cards that you can choose from as far as the different champions fighters magicians all sorts of things that you can go ahead and choose between as you can see you're going to be getting one champion a fighter a magician and a mender for your party and you can select any of these that you want now yeah, so you're only going to need four of them and one from each of these decks here as well as you're going to get a champion card that you're going to add to, to your specific champion and same for fighter magician and monk or mender uh, basically you can choose front or back and there's a total of two of them with front or back that either of you can go ahead and choose once you've chosen them along with your specific champion fighter mage or mender you'll place them just like this you're going to always have two backline units and uh, two frontline units so in this case here these guys are supposed to be in looks like the uh, back line or no this is these are the front line the rogue and the the warlord and the monk and the poisoner would be starting in the back line in which you go ahead and place them just like this and the same would be said for your archer and your plague doctor these will go in the back and then your pyromancer and the grave knight actually these these this is the symbol that shows you where they go to start the game off with so in fact these would go up and these would go down. So that would basically tell you where they're going to go in the game. And then you wouldn't need the rest of these cards. You wouldn't need any more of the menders, the fighters, magicians, or the champions. So you can go ahead and set these aside. 
and until you play the next game. And remember, you're always going to have two front lines and two back line units. The player who's going to go first will draw three cards from this deck here, and the player who's going to go second will draw five. Remember to always keep this here as a reference, as well as everybody's going to get their player abilities and hero abilities reference card, so you know what you can do on your turn. Speaking of on your turn, the player who gets to go first is obviously the player who has least, the least amount of cards. And on your turn, you can activate each one of your heroes once as well as you can play as many player uh, player abilities as you possibly can. Now you're limited based on the number of cards you have because every, every player or character here is going to at least require you to discard a card for any of their abilities along with their basic attack and player abilities function the same way as well. They all have a thing that says discard a card, discard a card to do a specific thing. So then this player begins, he's gonna get to choose any of his characters or, or he can use his abilities, but he only has basically three actions to use based on the number of cards he has in his hand. So for instance, if he wants, he can select this Poisoner Magician and he can say, oh, I want to do this one here because it says five to seven. Well, I have a seven in my hand, so I can go ahead and discard the seven card to do whatever this specific thing uh, says. And it says you get to rest, which means you get to gain a health. At the beginning of your next enemy turn, put the top or bottom card of the discard pile back on top of the deck. So that's a good way of shuffling and placing new cards on top of the deck. So that's one action you could do. You can do a basic attack as well, where you discard a card, and then you're going to check your attack value, as well as flip over a card from the deck, and add that value to your attack value. And based on the character you're attacking, you'll add, you'll, you'll basically have those two added uh, attacks to the defense of your opponent. And like in this case here, the Pyromancer here has a defense of five. So a two and a two would not defeat that Pyromancer. And in fact, I would have spent this card just to use the ability. And after that, he can't go ahead and act again. He's chosen to use his attack action on the turn. Uh, the same can be said for any of these other characters. Another thing to note is that heroes in the frontline area may only attack other enemies in the frontline area, and unless they have something like ranged, and certain characters will show whether they have ranged attack, which is this little symbol right here, in which case they can attack any hero that they so choose. Uh, the same as we said for the heroes in the back, they can only attack if they have a ranged attack, and they can only attack one of the enemies with their ranged attack. Player abilities will differentiate in the fact that you can discard a card to heal yourself, you can discard a card to, dis to discard an additional card and draw a new card, uh, discarding a card to move your heroes from the back to front or front to back. You can also discard a card to charge. You can choose a hero that's in the frontline range, and while he is there, you can use a weapon attack to attack a character in the back. So you can make a melee weapon attack as though it had ranged. You can discard one of your cards uh, when it's not your turn, to prevent an attack. So for instance, if he discards a five, right, uh, to do his special specific ability to attack you, you can also discard a five. And if you do so, you can prevent that from happening. And the final one is focus. You can add plus one to your next check. So whenever you flip a card over to check to see if you succeed, you can add plus one by discarding a card. It's a very high cost. Heroes, of course, have the basic attacks. They can use any of their abilities and they can do anything that has an X printed as well to discard cards. A lot of the heroes will do a bunch of different things, whether it be moving and then charging to attack with this Warlord when you pay eight, or maybe you want to do something like traumatize. Enemies damaged by this hero's weapons have defense minus one, and he gets to attack as long as he discards a two, two, two three, or a four. When you run out of cards, or when you want to be done, you can basically discard your hand, and then you're gonna draw up to five more cards, which will let you take five more actions on your next turn. And then you're gonna go ahead and hide these. These are actually hidden cards that only you as the player get to see them. And then we go to this player here, and he would use his cards to do his abilities and his player actions, trying to damage these guys here. Because if you get your attack over your opponent's character's defense, you'll actually reduce that character's HP from six to five, from five to four, all the way down to the exhausted area. So right here, this is the exhausted. When a character gets exhausted, they can't heal. They're basically knocked out for the rest of the game. Some other interesting things that happen while you lose HP HP is you'll gain certain passive abilities. So like for instance here, if he's got five HP, the hero's gonna get plus one to checks. Four, he'll get plus two to checks. 
And then when he triggers this specific one here, it has that little trigger symbol. When this happens, when he loses this HP, the hero can perform an attack or a, a regular melee or a ranged attack. And if he gained health and dropped again, he can do that ability again. So every time it hits that area, whether it be from here to here or whether it be from here to here, he can use that special ability. And then finally, of course, the exhausted area. If it gets to that point, the character is basically fainted and he can no longer do anything. Every character has unique aspects to them as to how and what they do when they take damage. And sometimes certain characters like taking damage because they can utilize that to increase their potential and abilities throughout the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You keep going back and forth, taking turns, using all of your cards to do character and or player abilities, knocking your characters out or your enemies out. And once somebody loses all of their characters, you win. Oh, hopefully you do, unless you lose all your characters and they win, which would kind of suck. But anyway, let's come up and discuss some more. Okay, so let's talk about To the Death now that we've gotten the description out of the way with a couple of caveats. Uh, the first thing is that you can discard three of the same type of card and use an ability twice on a character. So for instance, like this Warlord here, he's got a five through seven battle plans ability, which lets you uh, heroes have defense plus one at the beginning of your next turn and draw a card. If you discarded three fives from your hand, you get to do that ability twice, which means that your heroes would have plus two until the beginning of your next turn and you would draw two cards, which is very, very good. And feats are only available to you if you have the right number and you have three of that number to utilize that specific feat for that specific character. Another thing is when you attack, so I got the defense a little wrong, but basically the idea is I've got a three and a six on my hand. So my character has a plus one attack. So in order to attack with that character, I have to discard a card. So I've discarded my card to attack an enemy character. Now I'm a front line, I attack a front line, so no problem there. Uh, basically what's gonna happen is we'll take the, the uh, so you'll take this card here from the top of the deck and you'll check and you'll flip this over and this is a six. Then you're gonna add your plus one base, which is seven. Then you're gonna check their opponent's defense. Okay, your opponent has five, which would mean you would do a damage and they would lose a health. However, if that opponent had your total cumulative numbers, so the six plus one, a seven in their hand, they could discard the seven to prevent that attack. However, you cannot discard an, a, a card to prevent a skill, only to prevent a total cumulative attack. So that was one little thing I got, and hopefully that explained it well enough for you guys. There is a lot of cards in this game. Uh, there are a lot. It looks overbearing and overwhelming at first because there's so much in the game, but realistically, you're only going to be using the eight cards, your characters and their, their HP things, as well as the cards in your hand, which are numbered from like one to seven or eight or so. And uh, the rest of it's just bonus stuff that you can kind of change and manipulate the game to play it differently every single time. There are, these are all the menders in the game uh, that I have at least, which are all these guys here. There's a ton of them. And then you also have magicians and there's the fighters and the uh, champions here. And they all are their own unique style of fighter. Some of them will tell you that they go on the back line. Others will tell you to go in the front line. But the only thing you need to remember is that you get two in the front and two in the back to begin the game with. And you can kind of situate your characters as to how you would like to position them. Obviously, I would always suggest you put the guy with the shield in the front and the guy or girl with the arrows in the back. And that way, you're going to be able to utilize those characters to the best of their ability. However, there's so many characters and they all have unique styles of play that sometimes the fighter in the back is actually going to be a good thing for you. It is a tactical skirmish game, definitely. It's going to feel like playing one of the old Final Fantasy games, not only because of the excellent pixel artwork. I really like this stuff. It reminds me of building my character, making my character on Minecraft with the pixel artwork. It reminds me of Mega Man and the old school Final Fantasy games. But it also comes to play in these those old Final Fantasy attacking style where you're going back and forth turn-based attacks based on your initiative kind of thing. This functions very similar to that and knocking out your opponent's character. So if you've ever wanted to play one of those old Final Fantasy games in real life with your friend, against one of your friends, being and also being able to choose a large amount of different characters for your team each and every time, this is going to be the game for you to do that. It functions a little bit like Puzzle Dungeon. It gives you that same beautiful feel that I so much 
enjoy about Puzzle Dungeon, but it adds that extra player and that puts it into more of a competitive 1v1 scenario. There's also the solo player mode, which is also very similar to the 1v1, but you're playing against the AI. You can make it as challenging as you want, and in fact, it can be a real challenge in the game, and even just playing it on its average mode can be pretty taxing. You, you actually have to put in some effort to make sure you can beat the bad guys in the game. There is a bunch of bosses, there's a bunch of minions, there's a bunch of additional cards you can put into the AI deck to make it even stronger. So what this game really has for it obviously is replayability. If you like the style of artwork, which I love, if you like the one-on-one -on -one style tactical gameplay, which I like, I wouldn't say I love it because I'm not very good at it, but I do enjoy it and it gives me a lot of nostalgia. But if you love that, this is definitely a game I would strongly suggest taking a look at. Not only that, but the replayability value in this game is, obviously, if you if you haven't heard by now, me explaining that, is huge. There's a ton of it, and even just getting the base game, because I think this is the Kickstarter version, is going to leave you playing endless amounts of time to the, to the point where you get in that cult of the new spirit and you pick up something else, which is basically how it always works. Oh, there's also one little additional thing that I like about this game, too. It's got these cards here, which are ability cards. So sometimes you have passive effects or active effects that will target one of your players, like burn or poison, and you'll put this on your characters as a reminder. This is the 5 to 7 ability from the knight, so that means you'll take one more point of damage next turn. And then, of course, on the opposite side is also energy abilities, which, or enemy, energy, enemy abilities, which will also do the same thing to your characters based on how your enemies do poison and all that good stuff so there's a lot going for this game uh i really enjoy this one i strongly suggest you take a look at it if you like two player style games or a one player solo experience with a tactical ex tactical aspect to it anyway that's pretty much all i gotta say about it and as far as the negatives go there really aren't a lot as long as you like this type of game you're going to enjoy this type of game uh but if you're if, if you've seen what you've seen here is something that you're like that's eh, probably not for me that would be a way to say you know it's probably not a game you're going to enjoy if you don't like the old school uh, back and forth attacking tactics style game or there's a lot of thinking the fact that the game is on its surface very simple to understand but has a ton of complexity to it when you want to decide what actions you take and if you have a lot of that uh, uh, inability to determine what you want to do on your turn analysis paralysis then maybe not as well but anyway that's that's it to the death check it out down below and link in the description it was on kickstarter and you can pick it up now for you and your entire family and friends and kids and, and dogs and pets and y y you get the idea